First off, I want to give you a quick overview with regards to cross-site scripting or XSS. One example of a XSS based attack is when you have a website that uses an URL parameter like name to greet the website's visitor. Without proper input validation, this can turn into an attack where the attacker inserts a piece of script into the website. In this case, a JavaScript alert would pop up with the message owned. In general, a XSS attack is present when the attacker injects some kind of code like HTML or JavaScript onto a website. Different purposes for XSS attacks include changing a user's billing address or changing his settings, stealing cookie information, inserting advertising like a link into a website, stealing a form token to make CSRF easier as discussed in the previous part of this video series, and more. There are three different kinds of XSS attacks. The first is the so-called persistent attack. In this case, the attacker's code is stored on the website server, for example in a guestbook application. Now the user just has to visit said guestbook and he is immediately exposed to attacker's code without having to go through a special link. Even system logs can lead to persistent XSS attacks when you for example have an area in your admin control panel where you can view where people are coming from to visit your website. An attacker could fake the referrer data and include a piece of JavaScript into the URL. Now the admin visits that page and is, and is exposed to the JavaScript unless you specifically encode the output. In this case, the attacker can easily obtain the admin's cookie information and hijack his account. The second type is the so-called non-persistent XSS attack, the most common type. Here, the user has to go through a special link in order to be exposed. Do you remember the example where I posted a link to a website that greets the website's visitor based on an URL parameter? This is an example of a non-persistent attack because the code doesn't get stored on the server. A different example would be where you have a search form on your website and you display the search string on the results page. Now all an attacker has to do is get you to visit the search results page through one of his links and he can inject all kinds of things onto the page. Every time user supplied data is shown on the website without proper encoding, this can be exploited by attackers. Non-persistent types of attacks require a fair bit of social engineering because you have to click on a link that is specially prepared by an attacker. The third and last type is the so-called DOM-based access attack. Here the, the client-side script is vulnerable, for example the JavaScript code. In this type of attack, the attacker's code doesn't even have to pass through the server to affect the visitor. Let's get back to the example of the website greeting. Say this is a static website and a piece of JavaScript reads the URL parameter and displays its content on the website. Now you have a DOM-based attack. In part 1 of my video series, I made a separate video where I talked about high-profile victims of CSRF attacks. However, with XSS, there is a wonderful website called www.xsst.com that is constantly updated with new information about XSS vulnerabilities. It's a fascinating read and you should definitely check it out. As usual, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at arne at Next up is part 2 where I talk about how you can protect your website.